I'm Chris. Um, I said I'd post some videos of the K6100, this beast, to uh, CNC Zone. So this is a long video, seeing as I haven't posted that many videos yet. So this evening I'm making a wee collet holder for collets. Um, which are the wee tiny ER11 collets which go in the spindle. Um, because I have a pile of these little cardboard boxes lying around with the collets in them, and the boxes are going to fall apart. So I'm just going to make a, um, a wee holder for them out of a piece of 10mm acrylic. Good hard stuff. And um, going to machine that on the machine. Already designed up my wee holder in V-carve. Um, there's some engraving and the cutting of that. I'm not going to be using dust collection, so you'll be able to see what's going on with the spindle. Uh, the dust collection system's hanging up in the ceiling at the moment. Um, yeah, that's about it. So. Hope you enjoy. I've got to shift the camera now. Okay, so here we have the vacuum hold down. I'm not using that today. I'm using good old fashioned double sided tape. So, um, and the reason I'm not using the vacuum hold down is that I'm a bit short of power in the garage here and uh, I have to run two fairly long extension leads into the house to be able to use the vacuum hold down. And it's just a bit annoying. And for something this small, not really worth the hassle. Um, so what I'm going to do is use some good quality double-sided sticky tape. And stick the bit of perspex down to the top. I'm going to line it up fairly square. Um, you see I've got lines on the... Um, the table here, which weren't actually there for that purpose, but uh, they come in handy nonetheless. Stick that down. There you go. Okay, we're down on the floor beside the machine now, and the reason we're down here is just to check that the water cooling's running, because, uh, yep, don't want to run the machine without keeping the uh, spindle cool. Okay, here we have the ER11 collet nut, it says ER11 AL, those ones are from uh, CTC Tools, um, and the collet, so this is a 1 8 inch collet, uh, this one came with the machine, and for the first cutting procedure, I'm going to be using a 30 degree by 0.2 millimeter engraving tip. These are really, really sharp, but uh, fairly good for engraving, funnily enough, but very sharp, um, hence the sticking plaster. I caught myself on it earlier today. Ouchie. Okay, next up we want to uh, set zero. Okay, once we've set X, Y, zero, then we have to set Z, zero. So we move out to the middle of the material. Place the um, cut adjuster on there. It moves down. So now we've now we've got all three axes ready to go. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is set the spindle speed. I'm aiming for 12,000 RPM, give or take, with an engraving tool. According to my handy dandy speed chart, that's uh, 200 on the variable frequency drive. That's 200 hertz. On the K6100, um, you set the spindle speed down on the variable frequency drive here, setting it down to about 200, give or take. You can control the spindle speed from the pendant using the DSP controller, 
um, you use the digital outputs on the DSP controller into the digital input on the VFD inside the router. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but I probably will, uh, just for convenience sake. Okay, so now we've got the um, memory stick in the DSP controller and um, we've copied the two program files we need to it. We'll go in and select the first one we want, which is the engraving one. And here we can set the processing speed, the rapid speed, the ratio for the down travel and speed ratio. So the processing speed is the actual travel of the tool. You can set the F speeds, the feed speeds in the G-code if you want. Um, I've opted not to do that. The default is to control it in here. Um, I may change that in the future, but for the moment I'm doing that here. Um, we're going to cut at 600 millimeters per minute. Um, relatively slow speed, but this is an engraving tool, so we don't want to uh, snap the tip off it. Um, this setting here sets the um, vertical travel, the Z down rate. So that will mean that it's traveling at 150 millimeters per minute. And um, this one here, if I set this to 0.5, then I would start off processing at 300 millimeters per minute. And then you can increase the speed while you're running the program. That's about it. Let's start the program. So now I'm changing to a 4mm end mill for the next cut. I forgot to record a video saying exactly what I was doing there, but uh, you'll get the idea. Now because I've changed tools, I have to reset Z again, and you'll see I've actually placed the tool out over some area that's not engraved, and the reason for that is that the engraving might offset the Z slightly. So we'll just set that Z. Okay, now we grab the program for the um, four millimeter cut which I've called ER114mm.tap, uh, funnily enough. Now we're not going to run this one at 600mm, uh, we'll run that at 2 meters per minute. Um, oops. Try three zeros. And uh, then we'll be underway. There we go. Um, of course, it's about now I regret doing this without dust collection because I now have uh, acrylic chips everywhere. For the sake of uh, not having everybody watch me clean up my garage, I'll uh, just pick off the 
double sided tape. Now all that's left is to uh, put all of the collets into the wee cuppy thing, or into the wee standy thing, I don't know what you call it. Um, in the wrong hole. Yeah, so there you go, I hope you found that interesting. How to do something with a CNC machine, or not, because I'm sure I did a few things wrong. Um, I've only had the machine a wee while, and I'm still essentially learning how things go. So, uh, have a good day. I have no idea where they're in, hang on.